Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. In this video, we are going to see how to implement validations in an enterprise level Spring Boot application. Also, we are going to see how to beautify the technical exceptions shown to the client like front end or the postman. Like for example, invalid method arguments or 400 bad request, how to beautify such technical exceptions to some user friendly message that the age should not be greater than 100 or the email ID is not valid. So how to do that using global exception handling also we are going to implement and see also we are going to implement validations in a Spring Boot application. So let's get started. Hey guys, uh, recently we have launched a course covering an end to end full stack application using Angular as front end and microservices and Spring Boot as the backend. Also, we have used Cloud to deploy this application and we have used CI CD that is Jenkins and Argo CD for continuous integration and continuous deployment. The technologies that we have used is REST RESTful Web Services, Spring Boot and Microservices for backend, Angular for frontend, GitHub we have used for version control system. Also to make the code unit testable, we have used JUnits. We have used Sonar for code quality checks. Also for containerization, we have used Docker and Kubernetes. And to deploy this whole application, we have used AWS and multiple services from AWS. Also, we have used SQL as well as NoSQL, that is MongoDB and SQL. On AWS, since for the SQL, we have RDS, we have used those services. And Jenkins and Argo CD for CI CD pipeline. Also, this is an architecture of the application that we have created where the front end is Angular and the back end is microservices. We have used ALB load balancers, ingress for routing and load balancing. And we have used SQL and MongoDB for SQL and NoSQL DB management with Eureka server and all those microservices counterparts. Now this is the CI CD pipeline. This is the CI CD flowchart for the application that we have created on local. So this is something, a flow when you create an application in local, push it to GitHub, create a Jenkins pipeline and do the CI CD uh, using Jenkins and Argo CD and at the end deploy the whole code at AWS EKS. Complete description of this course is covered in a very separate video. The link for that video is also given in the description bar below and also the link to purchase that course from Udemy is also in the description bar below. So please go and check the description for all these links. Now let's say if I need a validation that your name should not be null, your age should be between 20 and 100 and your email address should also not be null. Then what you would have done? You would have go, gone to the service IMPL and checked this detail. If, if, else if, else if null and then throw an exception. So such an if and else letter is something which is the least preference in the IT world. If you have things in place with the Spring Boot, you have things easy. For that, what you need to do is to add an annotation. The validation annotation is given by Hibernate to us and can be added to a Spring Boot application. So let's again go to our pom.xml. Not in the build, but in the dependency. I am going to add this dependency of org hibernate validator. Let's try to stop the application and run maven install once. Just to make sure the dependency is added to the application. Great. It is added and a maven update will link that particular jar to my application and we are good to go with this validator now you will have annotations available here in the DTO what I need is the name should not be blank so at the rate not blank can you see this is the hibernate validator constraint we have if you have not added that to your pom.xml this validation will not have been worked so at the rate not blank we are going to use and this is going to have the message. Name cannot be blank. Okay. Similarly, with the age, we have at the rate min. Value should be 20. And message should be with a comma separation. Minimum age should be. 20 minimum and similarly at the rate max C 
similar to this, I'll just copy. Value is 100 and max age 300. Okay, now a beauty part over this email is we have an email constraint also. With this email constraint, if a proper email ID is not sent, it will give you an exception. Similarly, it is also a not blank can be added to this because and I can say an email should be just a second. Not blank should be from Java X validator only. So I'll take it from Java X validator. And we have the issue removed from here. And not blank message says email should not be blank. I am trying to add this to import so that you don't have to look at this like it. At the rate plan. And I'm going to remove this also. Does it look better? I don't want it from my Bennett validator. It's defecating for me. I need it from roads back. Java X validator. Now it's not deprecated, right? So great. This is in place. We have it from the proper places. Our name should not be blank. Our age should be between 20 to 100. Email should not be blank and it should be a valid email address. If that much is clear. Now if I try to hit this particular DTO with a wrong request body, it should give an exception. But before that, I have to tell them that you have to validate it. So at the rate valid is an annotation that we can use to make sure the response body is a valid response body. So I think we have followed everything. You have to pass an argument with this. It automatically calls the default implementation of Hibernate validator. So at the rate valid is something we get from the Hibernate validator pom.xml thing that we have added. And now if I try to run it, you will for sure get an exception, but that exception will not be readable to you. For that, we have to use the global exception handling. So let me debug this for you and show you the exception first. So what all things I can, I can say age is 130, one, and I can remove this at the rate. And that's it. I think if this much is enough for me. This was initially 201, I should get an exception now. So if I try to hit it, it gives me a bad request. My controller does not even go to my debugger. So see, my debugger is on, but my debugger doesn't even go here. Go to my controller. So is this user friendly? Can you see this is user friendly in the controller? My debugger doesn't even go here. Doesn't give me any kind of exception. It just says bad request. I don't understand bad request is because I have given the age greater than 100 or is it because I have given the wrong email address? I don't understand at all. So that is why global exception handling is important. When you are going to pass a wrong parameters to it, it is going to give you an exception. Now that exception is method argument not valid exception. You can also see that here. It is going to have method argument not valid exception. Now you need to create a global exception handler. So we'll create another package dot exception handler. This exception handler is going to have a class which is going to be a controller advice. So employee exception handler. This is going to be a class which is going to be annotated by controller advice at the rate controller advice. I have covered a whole of a video on the global exception handling on the channel. The global exception handling is what we're going to use here. So two, three, two important things we have to use is at the rate uh, controller advice, that is the class level annotation and at the rate uh, this exception handler, that is a method level advice. This is going to capture one exception, that is method argument not valid exception dot class. So whenever your controller is going to throw this exception, you can catch it. And this exception is of some type that you can see from here. This is 400 bad request. See, 
so we can add this also at the rate response status so whenever my response status is 400 bad request this is the second one so now whenever i have the http request as bad request that is 400 then i need my exception handler to work so my exception handler should be a public method which is going to give me a response entity why response entity because this response entity is going to be shown here and that to be in a user friendly manner and that is whatever i'm going to sh give it should be an object and handle what kind of exception handle method validation exception Now, there is a lot of code that I have to write here. I am going to show that directly to you. Map is from util and this is just an exception. Okay. Now, this is where I am going to start my method. This is where my method ends. And... I'm not going to return errors. I'm going to return your response entity. Uh, don't worry. I'm going to show you what it is. Don't worry. Return new response entity object. What it takes? It takes two things. Remember the payload and the HTTP status. As finally, it's coming. That is a bad request. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you what we are doing here in global exception handling. Though I have made you understand all of these in the video. But this is where we are going to create a map. Map is going to be a key value pair. The string is the field name. So here if you can see we have multiple issues in the field. So age is also wrong. Email address is also wrong. So I'm expecting that the field name should be the key. So this is my field name age which should come here. And the error message should come as what is the error message we have thrown? The error message that we have thrown here is in the DTO. That the name cannot be null. Message. This, so this will be the value and this field will be the key. So this is the key value pair that we have added in the exception handler for us. So by the end, I'll put a debugger here for you. And by the end, when we return an error, it should be a key value pair. Sorry. It should be a key value pair with all the fields with the errors now if i try to run it again now if i try to add this i was getting such a bad response i don't want it so now even my debugger was not going now my debugger will not go to controller but my debugger will go to my global exception handler which is annotated with a controller advice. Why it is going here? Because my controller has thrown me an exception. Method argument not valid exception. Why it has thrown argument not valid exception? Because in controller we have done the argument to be at the rate valid. If it is going to be at the rate valid, it is going to check the validation for all the fields that are marked with some annotations. So we have done some issues in the annotations which are marked as valid and that is why we are getting an error where the email must be well formed. Why the email is well, not well formed? Because we have forgot the at the rate here. The next should be the age. So the age came here. The error message says it should be less than 100. The max age should be less than 100 because we have put it as 135 here. So we have put it as 135 here. That is why it is throwing an exception. Now if you see an exception, this is much more readable and easy to read for a human or, or for a front-end guy. He doesn't understand 400 bad requests, but he understands that email address that he is passing from the front-end is wrong. It must be well-formed. So it should be this. It should be like this, code at the rate Gmail. And age should be maximum 100, which is which we are passing as 135, which is wrong. So that was all about how to implement validations in Spring Boot application and how to implement global exception handling to give a user-friendly messages to our clients like browsers, front-ends and postmen. Also, there are many more things to cover like how to create your own custom validations with like for example at the rate unique, at the rate invalid, postal address and many such custom 
validations using custom annotation so we can see how to create custom annotation first then we will see how to create custom validations if you want me to cover that just let us know in the comment section we will cover those topics also thank you